Hey guys, this is Jay Calderon with Jay Unboxing here talking about what we learned over the weekend. Now, it wasn't the biggest fight weekend per se, but a fun one nonetheless. We started off in Manchester, England at the Manchester Arena with Natasha Jonas unifying the junior middleweight division against Maria Eve de Carey. We then moved stateside to the weirdest fight in recent memory with Montana Love suffering his first loss at the hands of Stevie Spark. Then we moved into a tougher than expected middleweight title defense for Janovic, who defeated a very, very determined Denzel Bentley. So that's what we'll be getting into here. But before we do, if you want to see any of the kind of details with all of these results for the weekend, so on and so forth, head over to jayunboxing.com and check all of that out there. And of course, I'd love to hear what you guys learned down in the comments section below, all your kind of takes, your biggest takeaways, so on and so forth for this weekend down in the comments section below. We'd love to hear all of that, of course. First things first, Natasha Jonas really deserves her flowers. She really is sort of the epitome of an overachiever that never stopped truly believing in herself. You know, she was someone that had a sol solid amateur career, one could say, won some, you know, some medals for her country before turning pro, but then struggling at times and really not quite making it the way that a lot of people probably expected her. She, she was actually the first woman to represent England in the Olympic Games, and so you had some kind of high hopes for her, yet she wasn't quite the trailblazer as a pro, that people expected her to be. She even had to kind of retire briefly in 2015 to a long run of injuries and just kind of bad luck. It just, it just did not seem all that good for her at certain stretches in her career. Had a couple of losses, and corner the, including that sort of return bout with amateur rival Katie Taylor, and was never really able to win that world title, it seemed. Then she takes a chance and moves up from junior lightweight to junior middleweight, which is a sizable jump, just to take one final shot. And she does it, and then ends up beating Chris Namos, Patricia Bergolt, and Marie in back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back action fights at 154 pounds. Again, this is coming from 130 pounds initially to start her career. That's not an easy feat. This is someone who was slandered, who was written off, who was, you know, really just considered a, a kind of shortcoming fighter that just did not quite make it to the top and now she's making this kind of history it's certainly something that should be commended she deserves credit where many in her spots at many different times in her career would have given up she ultimately stuck to it and got this done and it certainly was something interesting to see her do in this fight so all the credit to her in the world up next you have montana love gets found out well let's start with some of the positives here okay he finds himself now just 45 eliminations shy of Kane's Royal Rumble record. So that's a positive, and that's about where they end. Now, in case you missed this instant gif, in a foul-filled fight with Stevie Spark, Montana Love was hurt, dropped, frustrated, and ultimately got so worked up that he literally threw Spark over the top rope in the sixth frame. After a bit, the referee opted to DQ Love, handing him his first pro defeat. Now here's kind of where the issue is. Really at worst, looking for a way out in a tougher than expected fight is love in this encounter. That's the absolute worst because it did at times look like he was in a little bit over his head or was just getting panicked or flustered. The problem is that even at best, he was likely losing a fight, the second fight in a row in which he has been dropped now and still ended up throwing a dude over the top rope, which is never a great look. And this isn't exactly the top of the division either. With all due respect to Spark, this is a guy, if you're love and you're supposed to be the dude people think you are, you're supposed to beat this guy. You're not supposed to, you know, hurl him flying over the ropes because, you know, he's doing what you don't like him to do, which is punch you in the face. You know, you should deal with it a little bit better than that. Now, does this mean that it's over for love and that he has absolutely no shot? Of course not. It can still happen. But it certainly does show his temperament and sort of what he needs to work on in terms of getting flustered, in terms of getting frustrated, and just overreacting to whether or not you think Spark was fouling or making it a dirty fight. That does not give you the right to do what Love did in this contest. You know, there are some whispers of, well, you know, Spark got warned a few times, but Love just did this one egregious thing and automatically the fight gets called and it's a DQ. It's like, yeah, because sometimes the offense is so egregious you have to go straight to the DQ. You know, it's a simple enough metaphor, but it's like, if I cut you off on the road, maybe I get a ticket, maybe I get a warning. But if you automatically try to drive me into a ditch now, well, 
you might get a little bit more than just a slap on the wrist in that particular case. You know, certain things have bigger consequences. That having been said, this isn't necessarily the end of the world for Love. At least it wasn't a complete knockout loss, which maybe he was trying to save himself from anyway. At this point, he has to decide now which route to take. Immediate rematch, where he's a lot more composed, or to try and rebuild. But either way, based upon this fight at least, and his last couple performances really, it won't be easy. And finally, Genebeck looks very human. Now again, if in case you missed this, he did defeat Denzel Bentley in a tough decision win to retain his middleweight title, but again, it was a tough fight, tougher than a lot expected. Heading into the fight, a lot of people, myself included, treated this fight as sort of a sort of foregone conclusion. The only credit I can somewhat give myself is that I did say Bentley was going to be better than expected, but let's be real. I expected Janovic to score a knockout win, perhaps a highlight knockout win, and I expected him to do it a lot more comfortably. Instead, he starts strong, seems to get frustrated and one-dimensional in those middle frames, and needed to really rally late to ensure a win. Granted, he seemed always ahead on the actual cards because they just seemed to favor him a bit too much, but in the eyes of anyone else that was unbiased, it was a close fight, and Janovic looked human on those real cards. The good news, if there is any, couple things here. He did show that he can fight 12 rounds. This is the longest fight that he's had as a professional, and that's one of those questions you always need to answer eventually. And also, he carried a bit of that power late into the fight. The best thing you can say about Janovic in this in performance is that he actually did manage to hurt Bentley a couple of times in the fight, but the most he had him hurt and seemingly ready to go was in that 12th and final encounter, that well, final frame, I should say. So it does show some positives that at the very least, he still has that kind of what I call bailout power, where even late in the fight, if he needs it, he does have it there, and you always have to be weary of that kind of shot. The other bit of good news, perhaps you could say, silver lining this issue, is that maybe some will want to fight him a bit more now. Maybe fellow champions, big names, Jaime Munguia, Charlo, so on and so forth. But the bad news is they might think about doing that because he looks a good bit more beatable now than he once did, and that's never the best of news, to say the very least. And some quick hits here. Props to Denzel Bentley, as I mentioned there in that last take there. Certainly put a brave effort forward. I have to say that I, even giving him some credit, probably undersold him like a lot of people did. Certainly seemed like a guy who showed up to try and win, had a game plan, stuck to it against I still think a very good fighter in Janabek, so certainly Denzel, Denzel deserves some props. I know that's definitely not going to make him feel better than winning a world title, but at the very least, for whatever it's worth, he did put on a great performance, and in this loss, certainly saw his stock rise, and he'll have probably a couple of other big paydays ahead as a result of this showing. would also like to point out Sonny Edwards had a nice win over a top-rated Felix Alvarado. Now, the fight seems to be that you can make it flyweight is between Edwards and Bam Rodriguez. It's really a fight to make, in my personal opinion. It once was Julio Cesar Martinez versus Edwards, but Martinez doesn't seem interested in that fight for one reason or another, or certainly is looking for a king's ransom to take it, which to me basically means he's not really that interested in the fight. Rodriguez seems like a dude who might be interested in, and I think their styles gel a bit more anyway. Both can be a bit more technical, and Bam has that slugger mentality. Edwards is very crafty with his ways. Certainly a fight that I think would be very interesting to watch, and one I hope that's made in the not-too-distant future. And just a heads up for this upcoming weekend's fight between Jaime Munguia and Gonzalo Correa. Not going to be dropping a prediction for this one because, obviously, just not that impressive a fight. Have zero desire to do that. However, We'll be dropping two new picks later this week, so be on the lookout for those. Be sure to check them out. Hit that notification button so you'll get alerted when I do actually drop them. And, of course, check those out as well. And let me know what you guys thought about this weekend. What did you learn? Kind of biggest takeaways, as I mentioned before. We'd love to hear all that down in the comments section below. Who do you think had the best standout performance? Who impressed you the most? Who really let you down? Love to hear all that. Please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter at jcaldron underscore J-O-B. You can email me at jgonboxing at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you there. Also, be sure to check out jgonboxing.com for schedule, results, betting odds, rankings, and all that good stuff. And as always, until next time.